that has a book where struggling physically. Let's go to the thing. And Prince Atakrajima is going off for Mahatma Otu. So obviously, the idea for CK Akuno is still to keep the pressure on Kumasi Asante Kotoko. He's removed uh, Prince Atakrajima, who's more of a defensive-minded player. And he's brought on Mahatma Otu, who, well, we all know that he can get the goal, especially in the game against Kumasi Asante Kotoko. But, Akwara Otoko can play 10 against 11. Exactly, playing 10 against 11. Playing 10 against 11, always very difficult. But Mahatma Otu is a dangerous player. He can draw quality players, uh, he can draw attention to himself. That could limit the kind of uh, threat that Asante Kotoko will come into this game with throughout the, um, um, the rest of this particular encounter. As we see over there, a free header. That should have been the equalizer. Kofi Ejare bringing his physical presence into the goal area. Yalfrey Fong. Surging forward, crosses the center line. Lays on the pass. And not able to. Well, he, he had to do what he had to do to prevent uh, Ben Achempo from going forward. But matches between Kumasi Asante Kotoko and Accra has the book. In the month of April, well, most of them have ended in draws. 1974, 7 April, Accra has the book, played a 1-1 game against Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Gordon Prempe was on target for Kotoko, and goalkeeper Peter Lamte got a goal for Accra has the book. And then in 1978, on the 9th of April, a Robert Hammond goal by Accra House of Oak was cancelled by Victor Srebo. And Bob blasted away. And then on the 28th of April, 1972, in a league match, Kumasi Asante Kotoko beat Accra House of Oak convincingly by three goals to nail. And a certain PMK Kusi, a certain Opokunti, and a certain Opokwefriye were the heroes of the day. It's all in April. And on the 4th of April, 1994, in an SK Menu Memorial Friendly, it ended a 3-3 scoreline. Gasco Wusu Efriye, Asaribedi Akko and Felix Karikari were on target for Kotoko. Christian Saba, his brother Robert, enjoyed the last and scored for Accra House of Oak. And another missed opportunity by Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Another 3-3 drawn game was played on the 17th of April, 1996 in a league match where two goals by Steven Apia and one goal by Anthony Tieku was cancelled by Kojo Anani scoring one goal and Prince Amwaku scoring two goals. And then in 1998, on the 19th of April, Joe Ansan got a goal for Accra Hearts of Oak. Emmanuel Iyate was on target for Kumasi Asante Kotoko. So in the month of April, there's been a series of draws and of course one big defeat coming the way of Accra House of Oak. Let's see how this game will go after 90 minutes. Going to Accra House of Oak. Sadat on the far side. And the ball goes to Accra House of Oak. Mahatma Otu waiting for the option. And a shot is fired from Accra Good build up by Accra House of Oak. Mahatma Otu took his eye off the ball for a minute or two and then it all came down to that drive, which went wide, coming off uh, Accra House of Oak. Well, I mentioned that it could be crucial there, 10 minutes after the sending off of Lai Kingston. And for me, House of Oak have been the better of the two teams. We've seen that shot fly over the bar, and Kofi Ejari's free header, which I think from the free kick, he should have connected. But over here, Santi got to build and could get something from it. Yeah, Frimpong. He still has the ball, Frimpong. It's picked up by Isaac Opori. He comes to Mahatma Otu. And Mahatma Otu's pass goes wide. Michael Ekofu. Daniel Nieje. Raman has got space in front of him. Daniel Nieje can pass from that angle. He decides to pass and finds Michael Anaba. Anaba has made a run. He gets the pass from Yao Frimpong. Anaba sends him the cross. Kumasi has to come up with a chance. And it's a corner kick. Appeals for a penalty. Not given, and I think the ball may have hit Kofi Jarisan. I'm not too sure, but let's take a look at the replay again. 
Well, again, and now gets into a very good position. Swings in across. A champion gets away while well, it came off, off the chest. And I think that it, clearly it is a corner kick. But even if he came off the arm, you would ask yourself, was it in an unnatural position? Had he taken it out of away from his body and was he attempting to get the ball? Not um, find target. And for me, these answers have a reply of a no. A corner kick for Masha and got the right decision to take. Philemon McCarthy dealing with that, no problems at all. Ball falls to Raman. And you realize that Kwa has a book are no longer coming forward for the 50 50 ball. They're playing 10 against 11, and it's quite tedious for them. Ball brought down by Yeboa. Yeboa finds Yao Frick Paul. Yeboa is on the right. For Prince Tibuachi had made his run, the ball couldn't get to him. Mahatma Otu, a little push or a little pull there. And it's a free kick advantage to the Phobian. Kotoko are yet to lose a match here at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. They have won everything they have played for here. Minus two draws, one against Adriana, it was a goalless draw, and a 1 1 drawn game against Neil Edubiase. You mentioned a while ago that Hasbro had masked up in midfield. I think that it is also a case of protocol making work tedious for themselves, attempting to go through the middle. Once they can stretch play to the wide areas and profit from the speed of Anaba, Asante, and then Raman. Mahan Mahotu got on top of that, but he headed wide. And again, again Mahat Mahotu, like Ejare, is able to creep into the lines and the space in between Raman and Ejare on that occasion. You said the ball comes in. Ohini Brenya does not get his head to it, and it's Mahat Mahotu who on challenge heads over the bar. Ball picked up in midfield by Daniel Nierjay. And I've been so impressed with uh, Michael Anaba. He's combined effectively with Michael Ekufu, who's on the ball now, and Daniel Nierjay, who laid the pass earlier on. Into the ACN yard, but Philippe Makati comes out, but he makes a save, and that was close. Very, very close. Nierjay slipping in, not noticed, unable to connect to that ball, but Philippe Makati had his eyes on the ball, even though. He lost the first attempt at grabbing it. Oh, the first surge is forward for Akwa has a hope. Mahatma finds Samuel and Zumaba. And I think the sending off of Lyle Kingston has had a negative effect on the build-up of Akwa has a hope. Ball goes over the line, throwing advantage. And Samuel and Zumaba is not too happy. Captain for the side this afternoon, Samuel and Zumaba. Yafri Paul lays on the pass. It's picked up by Samuel and Zumaba. And Akra has to book still yet to find their rhythm. And this is the second half. 18 minutes gone. Yafri Paul looking for Ben Achempo. But there goes to stand tall. Daniel Nierje. He can deliver from afar! Philemon McCarthy was called into action, and I think he may have picked up an injury in the process. It will most probably be a finger injury. The ball was always going away from him. Nia J had saved himself up for that shot. Once he got the second bite of the cherry, you see it, nobody there closing in on him. He had a clear sight at goal, had a good view, let go, a grounder, and again, Philemon McCarthy there making a save and as he clutches his fingers I think that he is pulled up probably a finger injury. If you leave the field of play it could be another sign that Hasso Wolves will struggle to come into the game although they have a good goalkeeper or an excellent goalkeeper in Samia Jay. He's not kept the post ever since um, he suffered that injury in the friendly game against Asek Mimosa. So Philemon McCarthy picking up an injury in the process there's a tete a tete between uh, Solomon Mode and uh, Shine Aite. I don't know what decision or what instructions or what communication is going on, but Philemon McCarthy at the moment has picked up an injury. Daniel Nieje, and we know Daniel Nieje for those antics of his. He can let 
the drive score from distance. We've seen Daniel Nege score from that distance before. So it tells you that Philemon McCarthy had to bring everything out of his sleeve to make that save. Very well said. He scored a couple of screamers. Some against Hazelbrook. Remember last season at the across Sports Stadium, he scored a very good goal, a second goal. And over here, you see Philemon McCarthy is being treated for that particular injury he suffered. I think that the medics will do well to work on him. He might have taken a bullet of a shot. It was always flying or getting away from him. Samia Jay would always be confident. He would always take the opportunity at keeping the post for Hazelbrook in games like this and show that he has the quality. He's not lost any of that. But he could come into this game or he comes into this game with some bad memories of encounters between the two teams. Remember, he was in post when last but for beat Hazelbrook by three goals to one at this same venue. Well, it is, it is likely that Philemon McCarthy will not end the game. It is most likely that the injury to Philemon McCarthy is quite a serious one. The technical bench of Accra has are putting their heads together and Sami Ajay might finish the match for Accra has a book. Now there are 10 men against 11, against Kotoko. Kotoko is putting the pressure on Accra has a book. Accra has a book, the rhythm has not been there for them. Now would the change also affect the psyche of the players on the field now in that Sami Ajay is coming fresh from the bench. Well, if you look at some of the saves that um, Philemo McCarthy has pulled up, you will say that he's kept a hazard work in the game. Going out and Sami Ajay coming in, probably Kumasa Sankoto could take the psychological advantage from there and then embank in a couple of goals because Sami Ajay would need to warm himself into the game. Again, the reaction from the players could be that we are losing it. I mean, we've had Lai Kensington go up. We've had the best player seemingly on the field of play, Vilma Makati also leaving the field of play because of injury. It could just be a crucial point in this game where finally has a book. We'll lose it against Kumasi Asan Sekotoko. Well, it looks like a tall order for CK Akono in this game. And the fans, well, some of them have the best eye view from the various uh, corners of the uh, stands or the sta of the stadium. Michael Anaba, what a game he's had today. He's young, he's bright, he's a fast learner, and Philemon McCarthy is in trouble. I think Philemon McCarthy is coming up. He is not too happy about that. He has an injury worry, and it looks like Samir J will continue the game for a crowd. Now, that's not too good, is it? You are taking off your dependable goalkeeper. Philemon McCarthy has been in superb form for Accra Hazelbrook over the last couple of matches. Sami Ajay, as she rightly said, has not been in action for a while, although he comes on with a lot of experience. Well, Philemon McCarthy, you would expect that he will go on, put up a brave face so that his players will be, the rest of the players will be encouraged by this. But this could be a scene that will be associated with clashes between the two teams for a long time that a goalkeeper so keenly wanting to die, so to speak, for his team, unable to continue because of an injury, will weep. And it is, I mean, contrasting, you can contrast that with Sulama Abdullahi, who is smiling. Some seasons ago, I think in the 2007 season, it was Sulama Abdullahi who didn't finish the game against Hasselbrook because he considered what seemed to be three cheap goals against Hasselbrook at the same venue. So Sami Ajay is Sami Ajay is warming up to come on for Philemon McCarthy. So on comes Sami Ajay. And Philemon McCarthy is receiving attention from the sidelines. We will, we will try and find out, we will try and find out what exactly is wrong with McCarthy. Kornaki comes in.
James Saban with an opportunity for a crowd to vote. And the squared up solidly by Awal Mohammed. Yeah, Propon hesitated. He attempted to come in for the challenge. Then he backed off, giving Aban an opportunity to slip or go. But Awal Mohammed was quick, reading that particular threat and eventually clearing out in a no nonsense fashion. Throwing by James Aban. He headed on and cleared out eventually by Kumasi uh, Asante Kotoko. As a run for it on the far side, Benache, Benache and Pong, and was able to. And uh, I'm getting uh, some uh, news from the touchline about the injury worry of uh, Philemon McCarthy, and I understand it's yet to be confirmed though, but his uh, ring finger on his left hand is broken. And Kumasi Asante Kotoko, they come forward. Ben, I beg your pardon, that is a young friend Pong. Comes to the near side and it's Richard Yeboah. Michael Anaba delays on the ball and it's taken over by James Aban. Mawusu Sefa clears out for a cry out of hope. It's a one on one situation. Sadat Karim, can he get his composure? He goes down. Referee says the game should continue. Solama Abdullahi throws the ball down. Komasi Asante Kotoko, they move forward. Maxwell Okonedo is telling them, get into the half of your opponent. Michael Anaba finds Michael Akufu and it's Baba Abdul Rahman. Two players in the 18 yard box. Michael Anaba drives and it goes wide. So again, it's not too good news we are hearing on Philemon McCarthy. We understand that his ring finger on his left hand is broken and that's some bad news. Well, any injury to the fingers means it could take a long while before a goalkeeper could come back into action. Apart from that, if you look at the quality of Samia Jay, if he continues and he has a very good day, it will be difficult for any goalkeeper even to reclaim the number one spot. And with the sort of competition in Azogo, I think that this could be, or this plus many others could be reasons why Philemon McCarthy is trying. But for Kumasi Asante the Kodokov, they've not really taken advantage of the numerical um, advantage they have here. They've slowed up their build-ups, not putting Hazard Book under pressure. And Hazard Book would, would take this particular way Master Santos Kotoko is playing. Because with one goal, it could always be a, there, there could always be an opportunity for Hazard Book to come back into the game. Michael Anaba. And the overhead success kick by Ben Achampo. Obviously not good enough to get a goal. And so for the faithful of Accra Hearts of Oak, it's not too good. They are playing 10 against 11, and they've lost their regular number one, Philemon McCarthy, through injury. Referee blows the whistle and gives Michael Ekofu, the man known as Gaddafi, he gives him a yellow card. Hearts of Oak have been in several of some of these situations where seemingly they are losing games. But they have a mental, they have a mental strength. They always come back into games like this when you feel they are down and out. And I think that Kumasi and Sante Kotoko are keeping them in the game, in the manner they are playing. From nothing at all, Akufu gets into the referee's boot, and you expect that they could be doing more on the opposite side of the field rather than working themselves easily into the referee's book and allowing other work opportunities, very good opportunities at getting an equalizer here. Sefa will probably want to do a one-two with Mahatma Otu. He gets the opportunity to drive and he goes off target. Yao Frimpong. And Kofi Tibuache gets Yao Frimpong back. Ben Achempong has time this run into the 18-yard box. He gets the ball. The shot is back! Super save from Samir J. That could be a reason why Philemon McCarthy was crying because when he comes onto the field of play and mounts that particular goal push, he is always going to prove crucial save. And that could be the key moment in this particular game after the red card, where House of Oak could have gone down by a, a, a further goal 
and then be trailing by two goals. You know, it could be difficult defending or getting back into the game in that particular instance. But over here, he still kept them in the game, continuing from where Philemon left off. Good save from the former Black Stars goalkeeper, Samia J. And it's a Kufu with a corner kick. Headed out by Kofi Jari, but referee gives the advantage to the Phobians. And again, in that instance, the experience of Samir J in full effect. He had to stretch to his elastic limit to ensure that the ball doesn't enter the net. He tries when he has opportunities like this. The big occasions where the, a lot of um, attention is on, and then he proves over again that he's a good goalkeeper. Remember that before the Nations Cup, there were some who felt that he should be in the Black Stars or should be one of the three goalkeepers taken to the tournament. And in that game in Kumasi, he was a reason why Hearts of Oak did not lose that particular encounter. He was one of the reasons why Hearts didn't lose that game. goes into the uh, referee's books and Kumasa has to go to four. Another attempt at the free kick is cleared out. Meanwhile, Prince Bafu, the former player of Nanya FC, is warming up for Kotoko as the cross comes in. It's a bit too strong and too far out. It's picked up by Ben Achepo. He gets the better of Akon. He sends him the cross. And Kofi Jari, cool as a cucumber, gets himself out of trouble. Cleared out by Akon. Sadat. And the ball goes out. And an opportunity for Kumasi Asante Kotoko to bring on Prince Bafo. And what a game he had in that final, the MTN FA Cup last season. Played well against uh, Chelsea in the semis. Played well against Kotoko in the final. He now is a member of the Reds. Well, he's, he's shown beyond that that it was not a flash in the pan. Because ever since he moved to Kumasi Asante Kotoko in the second round, He's been key in some of the battles that he won. The one against Tibet professionals can be best remembered for one of the games he's played so well. And then in this game with um, Kotoko needing to take absolute control of the game and get a cushion goal, I think that his inclusion can be crucial. Richard Yabua didn't add so much weight on the right side of Asante Kotoko's defense, a, a metro, sorry. And I expect that coming on with a fresh um, limb, he will do well. Or any bring up. Michael Lekufu to the far side. Baba Abdul Rahman gives the ball away. Drawing advantage to Kotoko though. Baba has an opportunity for the cross. Headed out by Ousu Sifa. Throwing advantage to Kotoko, quickly effected. Prince Bafu. And cleared out by Samuel Enzimaba. Another by Michael. Prince Bafu beats one on the run. Does the pass. Michael Lekofu, and he shoots wide. Uh, Maxwell Kune disposed there, reminds one of the posts of uh, the head coach of uh, Tema Youth, uh, Coach Prince Owusu. 
And Kotoko would want to bring on Sako Idrisa. Ball goes out into touch. And an opportunity for Kotoko to make the change that they want. And they're bringing on the man who was in the thick of affairs. In their last match, their 3-1 win against Wasaman. They bring on the man who got the final goal in that match, Idrissa Sako. Well, ever since he joined the team in the second round, he's come on as an impact substitute anytime as Antipatico need him. And as you mentioned, he saw the goal eventually. That got a three points for Kumachi as Antipatico in the game against Wasaman. With the way Anaba struggled to gain control of the um, ball in the last 15 minutes, you would want to feel Idrissa, a lot to be expected of him to allow Kotoko, at least if they are not scoring, keep the advantage of a one goal lead. We're into the last 10 minutes of the match. It's Kotoko 1, Accra Hearts of Oak Nail, week 24 in the Ghana Globe Premier League. Kotoko are yet to lose at home. Accra Hearts of Oak have not done too badly away. They've won five matches away. They've lost three. Could this be their four? Sako Idrissa. Yeah, Frimpo. Frimpo let one go. And again, Samir J is showing why he's the best of the best of the best. Well, when Akufu shot some minutes ago, which was going always away from him, aiming for the top left corner, he stretched and saved it. You would expect that he will not um, struggle with a shot that was directed at him. Not to take the credit away from Frimpong, the shot was a bit direct at the goalkeeper. Very easy pickings for Samia Jay to deal with it. Corner kick floated in and it started out by uh, James Saban. Into the box again and Samia J to the rescue. A little bit of showboating if you ask me, but he gets the job done. Well, these are the stages, or it is the kind of stage that is meant for quality goalkeepers. He's shown that there was nothing in that particular cross, but he wanted to take another opportunity to show why he's remained one of the very good goalkeepers in the county, despite not enjoying the same kind of uh, results on the field of play as he used to between 2000 and 2006 in the country. We see up here, sitting next to him is Coach Ine, Ike Afrani, and uh, James Aban went down awkwardly, and that's uh, Ike Afrani in your shot. Sitting next to uh, Kwesi Apia, the head coach of uh, the senior national team, the Black Stars. I'm sure he's enjoyed the game pretty much. He, it is his favorite ground. He's won the red, the red of uh, Kumasi at Santi Kotoko before. He's been in numerous battles against the crowd as of old. Apart from that, for a national team coach who has the responsibility of building a local team for the chance tournament and then um, a combination of um, good players those players are brought and those in the country. I think that this particular game has given an opportunity at least to have another look at some of the players. Me, I think, has been phenomenal. He does his business in an understated manner, but he's been good in this particular encounter. You will not want to um, ignore the contribution of somebody like Raman, or probably even to a large extent, either Kofi Ejari or Otel Bonsu. And then the goalkeeper who, is just, who left the field of play a while ago, Philemon McCarthy, Samia J could even be knocking on his doors, if not for the main state national team, the Chan team. Chan's coming the way of Kumasi and Santi Kotoko. And it's Sako. Throwing advantage to Kotoko. CK Akono directing traffic from the touchline. Alfred Paul waiting for the ball is Prince Bapo and he gives it back to uh, Ousisifa. Prince Bapo does well to win the ball. Referee gives the advantage to Kumase Asante Kotoko.
Chance coming the way of Kotoko. James Aban cannot get to the ball. It's Yan Fripon. Daniel Nieje. Good thinking by Kofi Jari. Preventing that shot. Michael Lekofu. Shot is blocked. And away they go. Awal Mohamed. Safety first. Before Mahatma Otu could get to it. Chance coming the way of a grass. Hold the cross is on, but it's headed out by Oheni Brenya. Samuel Enzimaba again to the far side. Accra has the ball. Trying to get in the crosses from the flanks. This time it was from Mahatma Otu. He wins the corner kick. Out of nothing, Mahatma Otu nearly caught goalkeeper Sulama Abdullah on our way. That shot aiming for the near post of Sulama Abdullah. Corner kick floated. Another opportunity for a corner kick. And it looks like a crowd has to book. Now putting on a little bit of pressure on Kumasi Asante Kotoko. They've got a second corner kick in a row. And it's floated in again. This time they clear it around by Ohini Brenyan. Oh, who's the puppet? The back round of the Can he get a decent crossing? He does. There's nobody in the corner. Chance for us. Play a good goal. That reason the game to continue. And Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Away they go. Awal Mohamed lays on the pass to the near side. But unfortunately, Prince Bafu could not get to the ball. I would want to see that once again because it could be the biggest talking point of this particular encounter. Asante Kotoko have offered as of work the luxury of thinking that he can come back into the game. And clearly, has have created opportunities, the best out there, or the, the very good opportunities to get into this game. You talk of Mahatma Otu's clean header, which did not connect or find target, Kofi Ejari. And on that occasion, I would want to see a replay whether the final um, touch was on the ball or was on Mahatma Otu. A tete a tete between the referee Solomon Mordi and Shine Aiti complaining about one thing or the other and fourth official Samuel Suka will sort it out for us. Free kick advantage to Aqua Hearts of Oak. Chance for Hearts. A shot is fired, a second one, and it's blocked. Uh, something going on in the dugout of Aqua Hearts of Oak. And the personnel from the police service are there to see to it as the game continues. Sako Idrisa going down. And there seem to be some problems somewhere. Officials of Accra have to book technical bench. Sorting a few things out. Referee Samuel Suka is on top of that. Game will continue. Kumasi Asante Kotoko. This is Yao Frimpo. And Samuel Enzimaba will clear out for a throw in. As I take on the 18-yard ball, the shot is fired. Side netting. And again, the coordinator of uh, the match, together with the safety officer of the National Sports Authority, personnel of the Ghana Police Service, and the fourth official, Samuel Suka, trying to sort out that little issue in the dugout of a crowd. The game is on. Hearts have an opportunity to come forward. Cross comes into the 18-yard box. Uh, Sulama Abdullah makes a firm and a safe catch. Temporary halt in the game. And uh, Mahatma Otu seems to be in pain.
again, we take a look at the replay. That safe catch by Sulaiman Abdullahi. And we've done 90 minutes in this match. And that's the uh, a worrisome uh, Philemon McCarthy. Game continues. The chance to go chase the back. Brings the ball back. Isaac Ofori latches on to it. He goes down. And it's a free kick to a crowd out of all. Again, a tackle from behind. This time from Sako Idrisa. And Accra Hearts of Oak are coming up with an opportunity. Chance for Accra Hearts of Oak. Michael Anaba, they're all watching from the side. And there's a yellow card, I believe, to Awal Mohammed. Yellow card to Awal Mohammed. And can Accra Hearts of Oak laugh last here at the Babayara Sports Stadium? Kotoko won. Accra Hearts of Oak nil. Kotoko will defend this free kick with everything that they have. Mahatmaotu is behind the ball. Owusu Sefa is there. James Aban is there. Kofi Ejare is there. Five man wall by Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Last ditch effort by Accra Hearts of Oak. Owusu Sefa, Samuel and Zimaba. What is going to happen? Mahat Mahatu! It is a goal! Mahat Mahatu! What a classy goal! A goal beyond standards! A goal beyond shock! A surprising goal on the stroke of full time! the ever faithful supporters of Accra House of Oak as their anthem says be quiet and don't be silly they are the famous Accra House of Oak and Maxwell Kunedu has his hands up expertly taking free kick against the crossbar or against the woodwork against the goalpost Sulama Abdullahi completely beaten Again, what a wicked shot from Mahatma Otu. Straight into the net. And Accra has a book. Have put their smiles on the faces of their fans. Some would want to call it the myth of April. I told you earlier on that matches between Accra Hearts of Oak and Kotoko, most of them have ended in draws in April, is 1-1. Kofin Tibuachi. Yafrin Pong. We are doing five minutes of time added on. Five minutes. Chance for Kotoko! Yes, that is the winner! That is the winner! of a shot from Michael Lekofu. Sami Ajay was completely beaten on that occasion.
Takes a look at his watch. Game continues. A crowd has a goal. Could we have the last hooray? And the shot is blasted wide. Kumasi has a take out the call. And bringing on Steven Odro. Steven Odro is coming on for Kotoko. And Kofi in Tikwachi has been taken off. Kofi in Tikwachi has played his part. He got the first goal for Kumasi Asante Kotoko. He gives way to Steven Odro. And Kumasi Asante Kotoko will be going home with the three points and they are going straight for the league title. Referee Solomon Mode takes a look at his watch. This is the goal by Accra Heart of Hope. Brilliant goal by Mahatma Oku. Now watch this from Michael Gaddafi Akoku. It's all over. Kumasi and Sati Kotoko have beaten Accra Heart of Hope. Two goals to one. Here at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. It's been fun. It's been exciting. It's been Kumasi and Santi Kotoko are confirming that they want to win the league title this season. They want to go to Africa. It's all over here at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium. Thank you so very much for joining us.